You ever wonder how your yardages stack up to the pros? Or maybe just how they stack up to other amateurs? Today might just be a real eye-opener. Hey everybody, welcome back to Golf Test Dummy, the channel where I use my game to help your game. We're gonna be talking about stock yardages, the averages for different golfing groups of professionals and amateur golfers to see what their yardage cards look like. How far do they hit every club? What sort of distances can you expect from each of the groups? We're gonna look at the PGA, we're gonna look at the Champions Tour, we're gonna look at the LPGA, and we're gonna look at amateur male and amateur female golfers. We're gonna take a look at all five groups, but I'm also going to be making my own yardage card out here on the sim today. So I'm going to hit 10 shots with every club in my bag, and at the end, we're going to compare where my stock yardages fall with all of the different pros and amateur levels of data that are out there. And if you've never examined your own yardages and juxtapose those against other golf groups out there, you might be a little bit surprised at what average for a lot of these different groups is. Just need a couple minutes to warm up and we'll get right into it.
All right, that's it. We're all done. 10 shots with each of my clubs. Now, I don't have 14 clubs in my bag. I think I probably have about 12. And I'll say this, with my lob wedge, which is a 60 degree, and then my 54 degree wedge, either one of those wedges, I rarely take full shots. So the shots that I hit out here are indicative of what I would use on the course, which is probably like at the most about a three quarter shot. So we'll start out here with the 60 degree, which I averaged 72 yards with. Again, that's about a three quarter shot. I've got a lot of versatility in that club. I use the Cleveland CBX two wedges, which are really super versatile and very forgiving if I'm honest. So I get a lot of consistency out of those clubs, I believe. Uh, the next club after that would be a 54 degree, and with that I averaged 90 yards. On to the approach wedge. Now the approach wedge all the way up through my five iron are all of the Tommy Armor 845 irons. That, not the old, <laughs> not the old irons, but the new Tommy Armor 845 tungsten irons. So with those clubs, my approach wedge, which is other people's gap wedge, your 50 degree wedge, all the way up to five iron, that is a matched set. So with my approach wedge, I averaged 101 yards. Now, this is a little bit of a weird number because I know for a fact that on the golf course, if I'm 110 or 115 out, that I can pull that approach wedge and get it pretty close to the stick with that one. I know that I can get more than 101 out of it. That being said, maybe on this particular, the Garmin Approach R10, maybe on this particular device, certain higher lofted clubs, you know, the distance from the machine to the ball and then from the ball to the screen, maybe, maybe it gets a little kooky. But then again, I didn't hit every one of those shots perfectly flush. So it, it, I'll take it. I'll take it. Next up, we get into the pitching wedge. The pitching wedge for me was an average of 124. That's, again, a little bit different than what I can expect on course. I can normally play that club 100 to 134, 135 range, no problem, all things being equal. But 124 is fairly close. And I, I think that, again, I don't think I flushed every one of them. So with a couple of them that might have been a little bit less than average, it brought that down. But 124 is is. I think that's really reasonable out of the pitching wedge. Now with the nine iron, this is where I see a pretty decent jump. And this makes me believe that maybe if I were to put my clubs into a loft and lie machine to check the actual loss versus the, the loss that you're supposed to have on your clubs, I'm willing to bet that because of their, uh, most of these most of these club companies, most of the manufacturers, they have a tolerance. So you're supposed to have four degrees between clubs, generally speaking. Sometimes you might only have one degree or two degree between the clubs, and then other times you might have as many as seven or eight. Just based on the tolerances that they have coming out of the factory, they haven't been custom fit to me. So there's this jump from nine iron uh, up from pitching wedge. I'm at 149 yards with the nine iron, so that's a 25 yard leap between those clubs. That's not good gapping, and it's certainly one that could be rectified by, by having my clubs custom fit to me and, and really dialing those in, setting them on a loft and line machine. Eight iron is 167 yards. I think that's pretty respectable for an eight iron. I think that is definitely above what average golf, uh, average male amateur golfers are pumping out. I don't know that that's approaching PGA Tour level, but I think that you know the LPGA and the Champions Tour, you know that's probably, that might even be better than some of those. I, I, I like to think that that's a pretty good average with an eight iron. And then I get a pretty good gap up to the seven iron. The seven iron, I'm averaging 181. Uh, that's about a 14 yard difference. Uh, I think generally speaking, 10 to 15 yards between your clubs is probably a pretty good gap. So I, I think that falls into that category for me. Then you go to the six iron. Now I make a pretty big jump with the six iron here to 199. Now again, that could be that I just struck a lot of six irons really well above my average, or it could be down to the fact that my loft on my six iron is, is pretty different from my seven. You know, instead of being four degrees, it could be like six or seven degrees, and that might account for that leap. But then you go from the six iron up to the five iron, and you would expect at 199 with the six, you might think, okay, 210 with the five iron, but I only averaged 200 yards which is only one yard more than my six iron. Again, that could be down to the loft and lie of the club, or it could just be that maybe, just maybe, some of the five irons that I struck were just not that pure. They just weren't that center contact, really, really great contact. And I can honestly say, I, if memory serves, about six out of 10 of those five iron shots were good. 
and then the other four were kind of marginal or maybe not that great. Then we jump to the three hybrid. The three hybrid is the club that I probably use off the tee almost exclusively out here on the sim. It is a super rare occasion that I will hit a driver off of the tee on the simulator. Now on the course, it's different, but with the three hybrid, I was at 224. Now I can get it out a little bit past 224 sometimes, but with the, the 10 shots that I hit out here, I, I had a little bit of a, a, a I don't know, a, kind of a large distance gap between my best and my worst. I did hit some that were around the 230 range, but then I also hit some that were in the 215 range. So 224 average with a three hybrid, I think that's pretty good. I will definitely take that. The problem lies when you go to the driver. The three hybrid probably has the five wood and the three wood and then the driver. So there's at least two clubs in between those. And you might even say that a two hybrid could go in there and that would be a third club in between the three hybrid and the driver. So you would expect if I'm at 224 with the three hybrid for there to be probably a 25 to 30 yard jump to my driver, but there's not. It's only a 12 yard jump as I hit a driver on average 236 yards. Now, I just wanna say this. My driver is, is problematic for me, probably because I don't practice it enough, probably also because I don't have the setup just right. I don't have the ball position correct a lot of times. My swing gets a little bit different. The club itself, I'm using you know, uh, an R580, a TaylorMade R580 as my driver. That is definitely like I think a 15 year old club. And then I also have a TaylorMade M2 that I can maybe get up to 240 on average. But really, these are older clubs, it's older technology, and they have not been custom fit to me. I think I could benefit greatly from having a driver custom fit to sort of get the optimal ball flight characteristics, get the, the right launch angle, to get you know the, the right spin characteristics on that golf ball, and, and also just some mechanical work from me, a little bit of practice with the driver in order to dial it in. That 236 average with the driver is a disappointing number to me, definitely. With the way my irons are, you can look at those yardages being you know, somewhere around, I guess, the Champions Tour or possibly the PGA Tour on some of those clubs which you know, I just think is fantastic. Uh, you know, I love that. But the fact is, is that if I'm hitting those clubs that well, the gapping going up to the driver, the driver just doesn't seem to fall in line with that, that same expected distance. So I'm gonna need to work on my driver. I'm probably gonna have to invest in getting a driver custom fit. Uh, you know, it is what it is though. I am disappointed in it, but, but all in all, 236 average with the driver is still more than the average amateur male golfer, so I'll take it. Guys, thanks so much for watching the video. I hope that you know you maybe gained a little bit of perspective on what's going on with my game, what kind of yardages and gapping I'm looking at on my clubs and areas that I definitely need to improve on with the driver for sure. But maybe also some of these, these groups, the, the PGA, the Champions Tour, the LPGA, the amateur male and the amateur female, maybe seeing some of these numbers gives you a little bit of insight and something maybe that you hadn't thought about or you didn't even, you didn't even know, you weren't aware of it. So maybe it gives you a little bit of, of, of something to put against your own game and your own yardages that can help you get some kind of, of better understanding moving forward. I hope that 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 happened for you. And if it did, if you feel like you got something from this video, please leave me some comments down below. If you have anything to say about some of these categories, these groups, if you have anything to say about something that you saw in my yardages, please give me some comments below. Let me know your thoughts on it. I appreciate everything from you guys uh, in, in so far in these videos that I'm putting together. The channel is growing. Please give me a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Help me grow the channel. I have lofty goals for the year 2022. I definitely want to see the channel grow and get bigger, and I will continue to make my content better and better for you as time goes on. I hope that I'm doing that. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video.